Hi, I'm Katie from What Katie Did and welcome back. Today I'm talking to you from the corrugated cottage near Glastonbury in Somerset in England and it's a 1940s cottage where land girls lived during World War II and it's been recreated to be as authentic as possible and wherever you look um, the owners have collected vintage 1940s pieces and how, whether, you know, whether you're a newbie to the 1940s or totally obsessed you'll have an amazing time here because there, there is so much to see and everywhere you look there's something something new to pick up on um, and I, I am going to leave a little souvenir I'm going to leave a pair of my stockings here um, just to just to show you just to show the cottage what they were like um, there are already there are already corset hooks and eyes in the bathroom and there's hair clips and bobby pins and and vintage hair dryers and all kinds of things and whenever you open a drawer there's there's something amazing to find. There's even a 1940s um, suitcase containing a nurse's uniform, and when you when you go through it, it's got all her, her her pictures and her letters, and it's a very intimate piece of history and really fascinating to read. But as I'm in the 1940s house today, I'm going to be talking to you about 1940s stockings because when when you think about 1940s stockings, you think about GIs and nylons. And nothing could be further from the truth because, in reality, nylon, you really wouldn't have seen nylon this side of the Atlantic during World War II. You would, you would have been looking at rayon or silk stockings. When we think of 1940s and stockings, we think about nylons and we think about GIs coming from the US um, giving British girls nylons. And that's, that's really a myth because even in the even in the USA, nylons were only made for a few months during 1939, and then um, the nylon was made uh, used for things for the war effort. And in the UK, nylon wasn't nylon stockings weren't made at all until way after the war. And when they when they were made, um, the vast majority of them were actually exported overseas because um, England had to do as much as it could to try and make some money because the the country was basically broke. So when we think about um, nylons in the 40s, uh, it didn't really exist at all. If you, it was basically getting any stocking at all because uh, stockings before nylon, they would have been made from wool, cotton, rayon or silk. And when we think of uh, 1940s stockings as these sheer silky things, we, we would have been thinking about silk stockings, not nylon. And when we think about GIs coming over with stockings, they would have been silk or rayon, they wouldn't, they wouldn't have been nylon at all. Um, the day-to-day -day wear, you'd, you'd be wearing, you know, cotton or wool. They're easy to care for, easy to look after, easy to darn. And, and you'd have silk or possibly rayon um, for best. But either, even with those fibres, they, they were, again, used for things like parachutes because they were so much better than, than what we had before. The stories about women painting their legs and drawing the lines at the back are totally true. If you if you're a kind of if you're a teenager, you could get away without wearing seam stockings. But if you were a grown woman, it really wasn't the done thing to be to be seen outside without see, without your stockings on. And during this time, you have to remember that all stockings would have been fully fashioned, which means that they would have been knitted flat, and the seam would have been sewn later. So all stockings would have had a seam. So you, people either used to make their own paints, maybe out of gravy browning, and use their eyebrow pencil to grow a seam up the back, or makeup companies actually started manufacturing leg makeup, which is quite funny when you think about it, because the same thing happens today. But you could buy leg makeup and then then draw your own seam up the back. But when when you hear about people doing that, then yes, it was actually true, and there there were advertisements for leg makeup as well in magazines and newspapers. So I've got my little box of 1940s and early 1950s stockings here and my first pair is a pair of genuine um, CC41 stockings. Now CC41 is the label um, for utility wear in the 1940s in the UK. So that basically says yes they are 1940s and they have the little CC41 mark on the toe there. And when, when we look at them they are actually quite thick and the, these are actually silk. So they are quite thick and so they'd be easy to darn and, and repair. If you were um, a well-off woman, you would have worn silk 
stockings if you were working or middle class you probably would have worn on possibly silk for best but silk was uh, very expensive and stockings were very you know we think of stockings being a throwaway item nowadays but they were very very expensive during the 40s and 50s and looking at the heel and toe here it's actually got a cotton cotton knitted toe reinforced toe and heel which would added which, which would have added to the durability so this is you know the finest of the finest stockings in the 1940s really that's what you that's what you would have had quite quite thick very durable but also very hard to get hold of I've also mentioned woolen stockings so I was going to show you this pair of woolen stockings and they're full of moth holes so I was, I was quite shocked and, and upset so this is me re-filming again to, just to show you the woolen stockings again they're, they're fully fashioned so they would have had the seam at the back and they, they are very very thick but they would have been easy to darn and, and very durable Recently on Facebook, I've seen there was a picture of a pair of 1930s stockings. And when we think about people darning their stockings, we think about invisible mending and, you know, the darns being all neat and tidy. And this picture on Facebook for this 1930s woman, I, I swear there were a huge, a huge ladder from like her ankles all the way up to her knee at the front has been had just been sewn up. And she has several other men's as well. So we have to remember that when we look at photographs from the 1940s and 1950s of women in their nylons looking immaculate and looking amazing, they, when you had your photo taken at that time, you would have been wearing your Sunday best. So I really don't know how, how often you would have seen women like with hundreds of darns on their nylons, but I'm sure, I'm sure it's something a lot more common than we, we would have thought of now. And certainly nowadays we tend to we tend to just throw away our stockings. Even, even me, I, I mean, I do a quick uh, darn on, on the toe just to sew it up if my toe goes through the end. But if I get a ladder, I just, I just throw them away. I don't think about sewing up the ladder at all. So now I have a pair of 1950s nylon stockings, Paula Sport, so sporting stockings. And as you can com see, comparing with the silk, they are a lot finer. So these, these are the nylon on your, on my left, on your right, possibly, and these are the silk. So you can see immediately that the nylon was a lot sheerer. And this is why nylon became so popular, because it was sheerer, so it looked more elegant on the leg. And also it's very, very quick to dry. So you could have the same pair and rinse them out and dry them overnight. So they... They lasted, you know, they, they, you could just get away with the one pair and dry them overnight and wear them the next day. Repairing nylon stockings is a lot harder than repairing silk and rayon stockings. And I've got some, I've been collecting many, many sets of darning from the 1940s and 50s, darning equipment for stockings. You could either send your stockings out to be darned professionally or you could do them yourself. But looking at the threads, they even here, this is a quite a fancy kit. The the thread is is thick and that, that is a silk thread. And I'll show you another one. Don't know how well you'll be able to see this, but this is the darning for the stockings. And it is, you can see the thread is 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 very thick. So you wouldn't be able to use this for, for darning. Um, thin, fine nylon stockings because it is very very thick so you know when we look at that you, you realize that stockings yes they were darned but they they wouldn't have been invisible and if you've watched my previous videos you'll you'll know that I've I've got my darning egg which I which I bought earlier this year and I've been meaning to do stockings but I haven't got around to it and one of the reasons I keep putting it off is because I know I know with modern nylon stockings it's going to be virtually impossible I mean you as I said before, you can sew up a, a little hole on the heel or the toe, but to actually darn, darn the stockings in a professional way, it's, it, it's, a, it's a, you know, a skill that we just don't have anymore. And with modern stockings containing lycra, it would just be impossible to do. If you are going to go for a 1940s look, I'd recommend wearing a sheer stocking slightly darker than your skin tone. It is still possible to get vintage rayon and silk, so if you want to wear those, uh, feel free, but please be aware that the sizing does come up slightly smaller than um, modern stockings today. And I do have a sizing conversion chart 
on our website, on our stockings page, so check that out to make sure you, you get the right size. But if you, if you are going to try and wear modern stockings for a 1940s look, I would go slightly darker than your natural skin tone, because as you can see here with stockings of the 40s, because they were a lot thicker of today, they certainly would have been visible on your leg. They wouldn't have been as super translucent as they are today. So really, the, the thicker, it would have been, it would definitely would have been um, a skin tone for day wear. So you, you're looking at some kind of flesh, flesh tone stocking. So if you want to wear fully fashioned, go for a slightly darker copper or even chocolate. And um, then you, you won't look 100% auth authentic, but you will look um, more authentic than, than, than you could have done by wearing a lighter shade. If you do have any questions about 1940s fashion or stockings, please get in touch. And in the meantime, take care and I'll catch up with you soon.